Tennessee Titans rookie left tackle J.C. Latham had another fantastic week against the Packers, and he continues to be one of the lone bright spots on this team. I'll show you what I saw on tape in today's film breakdown from Tic Tac Titans. Titans fans, welcome in to another film breakdown from Tic Tac Titans, your home for Tennessee Titans X's and O's. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, 25 years of Tennessee Titans fanatic and a certified film junkie who's covered the team for USA Today, Sports Illustrated, and hosted the number one Tennessee Titans podcast, Locked on Titans, for six seasons. On today's film breakdown, we're going to look at the performance of Titans rookie left tackle J.C. Latham, who for a second week in a row had a fantastic game. We're going to look at some snaps and pass protection. We're going to look at some snaps and run blocking as well. Before we dive into the film today, though, do want to remind you to get subscribed, stay subscribed for year-round free Tennessee Titans film content. Also, make sure that you throw a thumbs up on the video, throw a Titan up down in the chat, and there's a link down in the description for some Tic Tac Titans merchandise, hats, shirts, hoodies, stickers, anything that you would like to buy definitely helps support the channel. But with all that being said, as we always do, let's step into the film room. First play from J.C. Latham in pass protection, and he's going up one-on-one -on -one against Preston Smith, one of the best players on the Packers, had a sack against the Titans, really disruptive player through most of his career. And J.C. Latham does something just really, really impressive for a rookie in his third game only. You can tell that the game is starting to slow down for J.C. Latham. So what's going to happen is watch when Latham gets out of his stance. He's going to shoot his outside hand. And when he shoots his outside hand, he doesn't do it because that's his plan. He's trying to fake Preston Smith out. So when he shoots his outside hand, it's going to make Preston Smith think, okay, I can beat him inside now. He shot his hand too fast. But Latham is playing him here, and he shoots the outside hand on purpose to make Preston Smith come to the inside, and J.C. Latham is expecting that to happen and has him completely fooled. Fake punch. Got him. So let's look at this again. Look for the fake punch right there. And then what does Preston Smith do immediately? Off the fake punch, Smith says, okay, I'm going to come inside. But that is what Latham is hoping that he does. He expects him to do that, and he's there waiting for him. Locks him up, and now he's done. I mean, Latham has control here. He's in his pads. He's in his chest. Good job by J.C. Latham on play one. Play number two from J.C. Latham. I want to show the full view here because... You got to see it to understand just how important J.C. Latham is to this play and this opportunity for Will Levis. This is the drop by Traylon Burks in the red zone. Comes on the deep end. Levis fighting through traffic. Finds a way to uh, get a, an angle to throw this football. And, of course, Traylon Burks drops it because, you know, it's Traylon Burks at the end of the day. But what I want you to watch is J.C. Latham over here. So he's one-on-one -on -one again with Preston Smith. Again, a really, really good player. This is a rookie in his third game ever. And he just holds him off. And it's funny that Will Levis, look, he's got Preston Smith completely handled with his hands. I mean, this is impressive, you know? I mean, he's just got him handled on immediate, on immediate first contact. He's got Preston Smith handled. Go inside. I'm on you. Look at the feet. Look at the balance. And Will Levis is like, where's J.C. Latham? Oh, there you are, JC. Let me let me get to you because I know I'm going to have some space in front of you, JC. Bam. And what a pass. I had somebody tell me that Will Levis should have led this ball more out to Traylon Burks. I mean, I guess, but if we can't catch that and we can't bring that down for your quarterback when he's fighting, if Will Levis is able to get that throw off with all that traffic around him and then his wide receiver can't make this catch, I mean, yikes. What are we doing, you know? But J.C. Latham, just in complete control, good balance, not getting pushed back like Pete is. Pour one out, sad face for me. But uh, just incredible work from J.C. Latham against not the best pass rusher for the Packers, of course. That would go to Rashawn Gary, in my opinion. But Preston Smith had a really good game elsewhere, but not against J.C. Latham. So we've seen one-on-one -on -one rush wins for J.C. Latham, but what I want to show you now is a stunt 
by the Green Bay Packers, number 90. I believe that's Lucas Van Ness, the first-round pick from 2023. But right here, you have number 95, which I think is Devontae Wyatt as well. And they're going to run a, a quick stunt here. And Latham just does such an excellent job of picking these up. It's something that I've been really impressed with with Latham, Latham through the first three weeks. Not only is he doing a good job just in general with his hands and keeping good balance and not getting driven back, but he's also been smart as well. So right here, this is a, a, a stunt that every team is running on the Titans right now where the defensive tackle gets vertical and then the edge rusher loops around because they're trying to attack Peter Skaronsky. That That's just the reality. They're trying to get Peter Skaronsky on his heels and then make him have to anchor down, which he's shown some struggles with, if I'm honest. But look how it's passed off. And of course, Pete gets driven back a little bit, but JC's able to hold against a stronger player. Boom. Do you see how his head flips right there? Do you see how he flips? Once he sees his man start to start to turn in, his head goes with him. Once he starts this angle, JC's head turns in. Like, this is heady stuff. No pun intended, right? But, like, this is smart stuff from a rookie in his third game ever who's 21 years old. I mean, and then the power in the hands to stop an interior rusher. Really impressive stuff from J.C. Latham. Now let's transition into run blocking for J.C. Latham. And obviously the Titans ran the ball for 11 times for 33 yards. So it's not like I have a ton of run blocking snaps to show you. But J.C. Latham has handled his job very, very well. And I do want to mention one other thing here. I have talked about on the Locked on Titans podcast. I've mentioned it on Twitter, at Tic Tac Titans as well. But one of the big problems that I have found with the Titans offense through three weeks that isn't individual execution, it's not an offensive lineman missing a block or Will Levis making a mistake or a wide receiver dropping a pass. Something that I would put on Brian Callahan is something that he has not done well is some of these plays take too long to develop. I spent an entire segment talking about it on yesterday's uh, Locked on Titans episode, but this is a perfect example of how some of these plays are just taking too long to develop and the defenses aren't honoring them at all. So what we're going to see here is some orbit motion from Tyler Boyd and look First, I hate this ball handling, if this is how Will Levis is being coached. Tyler Boyd is already past him. So, why, you're play faking to Tyler Boyd and doing a spinny circle. Why? Why? Like, nobody fell for that. And if you go back just a second here, look at Green Bay's linebacker blitz up the middle, and look at their safety, number 20, blitz as well. Like, no one is fooled. By the 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 spinny move, the spinorama from Will Levis, and this orbit motion to Tyler Boyd. If the Titans don't hand this off at some point, like the Titans have run this motion stuff in the backfield, and they haven't handed it off one time. So obviously teams do not care. Look at all these people coming downhill immediately. They are not worried about this at all. You either got to throw this out here once or twice or actually hand it off once or twice because nobody is fooled by this. And when you play man coverage, you're like, okay, go ahead. We got a man on him. And maybe it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. We'll trust our guys. But none of these defenders right here are fooled by this at all. So all that it's doing is, is it's taking a long time for these plays to develop. And this is going to be down, down, down. Raiden's pulling over. Chig pulling over. And by the time that the pullers get over there, everyone is downhill so much that it doesn't matter. There's nowhere to go. And Tony Pollard's got to bounce it outside. So I wanted to take a quick detour in this short Latham video to show you an example of what I mean when I say that these plays are taking too long to develop and defenses aren't worried about the initial fake. So this takes too long. And look, by the time Levis hands this ball off to Tony Pollard, Raidens can't kick out this guy. He's too far upfield. And where is there to go? Look at all this traffic. 
because teams just don't care about this little sissy foo foo stuff on the outside. So I'm not against the orbit motion. I'm not against the design of this play necessarily. But if you aren't going to throw this out to Tyler Boyd, or you aren't going to actually hand it off to Tyler Boyd on some of these which I think Traylon Burks would be a good guy to use in some of these scenarios as well, and you can get the ball to him behind the line of scrimmage and somewhere easy for him to catch it and let him just run. But, like, this play takes too long to develop, and the Packers are not scared about that at all. So, wanted to explain, I mean, where are you going to go? That's not on Dylan Radens to not kick that guy out. He's too far upfield. Chickaconquo can't even get over to hit anybody because it's so clogged up. You know what I mean? Like, look at that. What, what are we going to do, you know? And then Devontae Wyatt's screaming upfield through Cushionberry and through NPF because he sees the man pull, so he's just flying through there. Like, the Titans have to adjust how long these plays take to develop. You can't just take this much time. You, you simply can't. So, after pointing that out, though, back to J.C. Latham. What Latham is going to do here is Latham's responsibility is is to get a block right here. And he is going to take this man and do his job. Bam. Hits the double team with Skaronsky. And look, someone's supposed to climb up to the linebacker, but that linebacker's already here because he doesn't care about this fake. Isn't worried about that at all. You know, this is just window dressing that they're not worried about. Great defensive coaching from the Packers. But look at Latham. Now Skaronsky comes off the double team to get to the linebacker, and Latham just controls his man the entire way. If this guy wasn't 0% concerned about anything and flying up the field so fast, maybe Raidens would be able to kick him out. I'm not going to blame Dylan Raidens for this, honestly. This is a coaching thing. But J.C. Latham, it's supposed to be off Dylan Raidens' ass, off J.C. Latham's ass, and Chig Conquo coming in between him as a lead blocker. But Chig is so caught up with the traffic, and so isn't Tony Pollard, that it doesn't matter that J.C. Latham won his block and sealed his man right here. It doesn't even matter. But, nonetheless, a really good block by J.C. Latham. Totally controls his man and drives him a couple of yards. It's a good rep from the rookie. One of the things I also said on the Locked on Titans podcast when discussing the offense is the Titans need to go to more zone runs their gap scheme runs, and we're seeing the difference. If you're somebody who doesn't necessarily understand the difference between a gap run and a zone run, this is for you. So the last play, we had down blocks by Cushenberry, by Nicholas petit Ferrer, a double team down block by Peter Skaronsky and J.C. Latham. Remember, the play design was down, 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 and then you had backside pooler coming across to kick out. Okay, that is a gap run, you know, and this, what we're seeing on this play is a zone run. So you're going to have Josh Wiley in motion, but then he's going to come back in a split flow right here to take the backside end. And then these guys are going to flow this way on the zone run. Okay, and I think the Titans need to go to more zone runs because they're quicker hitting plays than the gap scheme runs. They need to do that for the moment until they can get these guys on the defensive front to slow down a little bit. But J.C. Latham is going to... Taylor Lewan was so good at this when the Titans had Derrick Henry and Arthur Smith. Taylor Lewan was so good at a front side kick out. He would just handle his man. And J.C. Latham does that here. It's a really great rep. Again, it's not the most difficult block of all time, but with this offensive line right now, I'm not going to... See how everybody float, flows together? You're flowing. So, in gap, you block a man. In zone, you block a zone. Okay? So, they're flowing here. Double team and climb. Double team and climb. And Latham on the front side of the play, he just needs to make sure that he kicks out this defensive end right here so that he can't get in right here. And then... It's up to Tony Pollard to say, hey, do I need to go through here? Hey, do I need to go through here? That's with a gap run, like we saw in the last play, there is a specific hole that the running back is supposed to go through. With a zone run, you take whatever hole opens up to you. And I think with how teams are penetrating downhill against the Titans right now, they need to go to more zone runs and allow the running back a little bit more freedom. And I think that Tony Pollard is a good gap runner, but Tajay Spears to me is a better zone runner. So I would like to see the Titans do a little bit more zone run here in the next few weeks. See, we had right here, Nick, Nick Climbs, right here, 
get up to the second level. Really great block by J.C. Latham. I mean, just never in doubt right here. Never in doubt. Now, the, the issue is that Josh Wiley gets absolutely wrecked by Rashawn Gary, and it kind of ruins everything. It's crazy how a bunch of guys can do their job. Look at this, and then look at that, and look at this. This is going to be a great run. But one guy, one guy doesn't do his job, which Josh Wiley on Rashawn Gary, that's a tough situation anyway, but that's life as a tight end. One guy doesn't do their job, and now it's a useless play. J.C. Latham, looking good. All right, so this is going to be an inside zone run here. The Titans are going to bring this man in motion, but what's going to happen is Pete and Kush are going to work here. Chig is going to work one-on-one -on -one right here. And then Latham is supposed to help Chigakonkwo if needed, but then get up to the linebacker and get up to the second level. And this is a good block by J.C. Latham, but a really good run by Tony Pollard as well. So we see it fire out. We've got the double team here. Chig right there. Latham is looking to help him. One-on-one, one-on-one on, one, one on, one on the backside. J.C. is looking to help, okay? And he checks. Chickaconquo has his man. And now Latham get up to the second level and get on the linebacker. And it should be a hole right here. Now, the reality is, is Chickaconquo one-on-one on, one on the line of scrimmage block against a defensive end. I don't think that's ever going to work very well. And Preston Smith really has control. But Tony Pollard does a great job on this run of bouncing. Okay? Watch how he plays it. Bounce in, Preston Smith commits in, and now he bounces back out. Bam. You see those cuts from Tony Pollard? That is, boom. I, I get really excited seeing this. I was a former running back myself. Now, <laughs> I was nothing worth mentioning, but did play running back. So, I love seeing these little juke cuts behind the line of scrimmage. This is how you set up your defenders. But we're talking about J.C. Latham here. So let me point out, he gets up to the linebacker, Quay Walker, and just not a chance. Not a chance, Quay. Like, J.C. Latham has you and you're done. So really good stuff from Tony Pollard here. Chickaconquo doing the best he can. <laughs> but once Latham gets his hands on the linebacker, it's, you know, he's bullying him. It's over. Titans fans, I hope you guys enjoyed that film breakdown on J.C. Latham. He's been incredibly impressive through the first three weeks of the season and really bounced back from a struggle week one to have two great performances in week two and week three. On tomorrow's episode, I'm going to be breaking down the performance of DeAndre Hopkins in week three. Hopkins came back to his normal self for the Tennessee Titans with six catches, 70 yards and a touchdown. So I'll be breaking that down on tomorrow's show. Again, make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed, thumbs up on the video, tighten up down in the chat. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. And as I always tell you, tighten up.